Hello, welcome to Post Colonial Space. I'm Masood Raja, and as you can see, I'm still in Ohio River Valley. And I'll take a few moments today to briefly explain the concept of symbolic capital by Pierre Bourdieu. Uh, now, please keep in mind, I don't have my books with me, so I've not had a chance of rereading his book, Distinctions. Uh, in which this concept is thoroughly discussed. But Pierre Bourdieu was a French sociologist, most famous for giving us a gradation of different forms of capital, which includes the economic capital, the social capital, but also the symbolic capital. And symbolic capital is crucial in understanding how power works in any given society but also maybe in tribal societies and even now in our own politics. So the main difference between actual economic capital or even social capital and symbolic capital is that the symbolic capital is not seen as economic. It is offered as something that is beyond money. So how does it work? In a study of uh, the tribes, what Bourdieu noticed was that the elders, the powerful people in any given village community or tribes were not considered the elders because they had more money. The fact that they had more economic resources was hidden, was what is called misrecognized. So that enabled the elders or tribal leaders to take on this persona of having some form of inherent qualities that made them into the wise men or the leaders of the tribe. So deep down, their position was dependent upon the number of animals that they owned or the lands that they held, but that economism of it was denied. And hence, they were seen as maybe naturally the leaders of the tribe and all. And that is what he calls the symbolic capital. And the way it functions in any given living society is that you hide the economism of any given exchange. So he gives this example. For example, there was a custom in the tribe that when someone, let's say you hired a mason to build your house and they finished the wall, you will hold a huge feast for them. And it would be considered a huge transgression if the mason instead said, okay, don't give me a dinner, just give me the money for it. That would be seen a huge transgression. Another example that he uses in terms of symbolic capital is that sometimes the tribal elder would go and buy the most expensive pair of oxen, which made no economic sense. But the reason the elder did that is so that he could be known around the villages to be the one who owns the most beautiful pair of oxen. Right? That added to his symbolic capital. Now, we know economically it doesn't make any sense because those oxen would never work enough to pay their price. But in terms of symbolic capital, they mean something. So if you look at it, how, I mean, even before Pierre Bourdieu, you know, articulated it and discussed it, the understanding of how symbolic capital works has always been there. I mean, if you look at British colonialism in India, how did they mobilize the symbolic capital, right? They couldn't buy loyalty through money from everyone, right? Especially from, let's say, the groups that were more martial or powerful, right? So they incorporated the local nobility into their system by acknowledging their noble stature and by giving them the pomp and circumstance of being a Raja or a Maharaja or a Nawab, right? That was symbolic acknowledgement of the hierarchy that already existed. In terms of the people, they created the myth of the martial races, right? My people, Rajputs, others. 
And by creating that myth, they could go to these people, their elders, and say, we acknowledge you are just like us. You're a warrior race. So why won't you come and work for us? That was all done under the symbolic capital registers. Right? Now, one thing that Bourdieu points out is that for symbolic capital to stay as it is, its economism must be hidden. It must not be naked, right? The money behind it must not be named, must not be acknowledged. Because if that happens, then it becomes capitalism, it becomes economic capitalism, and, and the symbolic capital loses its logic, right? So these are just some of my you know, off the top of my head, thoughts about symbolic capital and briefly how Pierre Bourdieu theorizes it. You can look at the usages of it even in today's world, let's say in American politics. You know, you can see people attributing wisdom to rich people and we never really know whether it's because they're rich or because they were wise and hence became rich. But uh, the power that is associated with those who are like the whole celebrity culture. They have a lot of symbolic capital. Their words are counted more valuable than the others. In academia, you see that the way we attribute power or legitimacy to what we professors say or the symbolic capital works based on how many books you've published, how well known you are. We all also kind of work towards accruing symbolic capital. All these things we do, publishing books, giving talks, publishing articles in one way or the other, is a process of accruing symbolic capital because then maybe we believe that our voices will be heard or will have more weight in them, right? And so in so many ways, instead of thinking in grand terms, if you just look at your own actions, uh, sometimes we make stupid economic decisions, buying an expensive car, carrying an expensive pen, buying an expensive computer, even though a cheaper one would do. All of those are economic activities, but they give us more than the thing itself. They also make us part of the symbolic logic of the commodity that we are using or we are acquiring. And hence, we can understand these actions better. So one thing that an understanding of symbolic capital does is it enables us to study any given cultural, social, political hierarchy and see how it legitimizes itself, how it functions in non-material capitalistic terms, right? There is capital involved there, but it is mostly symbolic and it has its own intrinsic value. It has the value in terms of how people view it. And that helps us understand why people do certain things politically, why they say certain things, because the purpose is to either stabilize and keep the symbolic capital they might have, or the symbolic cachet they might have, or to accrue it to increase it, right? Um, and that, an acute understanding of the symbolic capital and its functioning can enable us study cultures beyond politics of identity or redistribution or classic class system and see beyond the economism and how even though economy and finances and money is at the core of it, how sometimes value can be accrued and arrogated by people to themselves in symbolic terms. And it helps us understand that. That's all. Uh, I, am, I understand it's not a very comprehensive explanation of it, but this question was posed in the comments and I don't have my books with me, but when I have time, I'll post links to Pierre Bourdieu's work, and I highly recommend that you should read it. I will now see you.
next time in another of my videos. Until then, from Ohio River Valley to you, peace and love.